Hello, I'm just not, and I'm playing The Last Door, Chapter 2. I already got the lights off, so I'm pretty much ready. I'm in a headphones thing, for reasons. So let's get things started. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. Or forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Now then, I remember having to do that prayer every time it was lunch, but I don't quite remember it being quite so sinister. And I think it was worded slightly differently, but whatever. What, I went to a Catholic school once. At least I think it was Catholic. I can't remember the difference between Catholic and Christians. Eh. So yes, that again is quite a start to a chapter, ain't it? Oh my. Oh, yeah, thank you, too. Oh, okay, I didn't donate, but... Um, whatever. But you could donate, viewers. Hey, now tell me. Where are you? What do you see? Um, I'm in the middle of the forest. Ah, I'm sure things are alright. Oh, look. Who is it? Is it him, Anthony? Answer me. Well then, guess it went real. What is she doing? Get closer, work. Uh, get closer, Anna. This is. Count to three, you'll wake up. One. Two. Ah! Okay. Three. Now, wake up. Wake up. <gasps> you can rest now, Mr. Debit. That will that will be enough for today. Are these sessions really necessary? I am confident that it, this is your. That this is the best course for, of treatment for your symptoms. Now did you see him again? I saw it. What did you see? Can you describe it? It looked like it was an eye, perfectly rounded and dark, deep and empty, accompanied by the most horrifying pain-filled screams I have ever heard, inside a complete darkness where an evil dwells deep below. A forgotten fear of humans reasoning but doubtfully still rests deep down inside a, my, our being. In my case, that fear has already awakened. I can understand that you are disturbed, Mr. Debit. With your p permission, I would like to consult your, on your case with a colleague of mine. A man I've known for many years who is more versed in modern psychology pra psychological practices. I think his knowledge and expert experience would be very helpful in enabling us to understand your condition. If you think it would help, Doctor, I will leave and leave it in your hands. The agony grows increasingly unbearable, and if you believe this man can help, then I welcome his aid. Thank you, Doctor Wakefield. I bid you good evening. I think I'm reading is going too bad. Anthony, my friend, what really happened to you? How could you have let your wife Anna die so awfully? These doubts consume my soul. I hardly remember the time we spent together as schoolmates. I confess that beyond your endearing friendship, I can recall little of those years. 
Why the real world results in increasing loss of sanity. Wait, your words. Sorry. In your letter, you wrote that someone awaits me. A warning to ward me from genuine danger, or merely the ravings of a brilliant mind addled by insanity. Something stirs uneasy within my heart. I will not rest easy again until I go back to that boarding school and find out what secrets may lie within. Farewell, Mr. and Mrs. Beechwell. Worth. Rest now in peace. Well, I'd imagine the suicide, that, well, that ending was obviously quite a bit for the poor guy here. So yes, to the boarding school, where it all began. Memories, nothing but memories. Something like that. Sorry to ruin a mood. An old, a quite old, quite damaged mailbox. I'll be happy with this. There is a postcard inside the mailbox. Dear Matthew, it has been several months and still I have heard no news from you. My brothers insist that you have abandoned me, but I am sure you remain true. I know that you would never do that to me, for I know your heart and your honor the honesty of your eyes. I got this from address from a hospital in London and pray that it reaches you safely. If that's the case, I want you to know that I will always be waiting for you, forever yours, Juliet Halloway. Well, obviously I gotta get this letter delivered. Because clearly this place ain't doing a good job at that. An angel the Angel Gabriel, the school's emblem. I remember it being very pristine, but it looks neglected and dirty now. Clearly this place isn't too good at maintenance. A stone eagle lies on the floor. It appears to have broken off the fountain. Well, it's mine now. Anything else while I'm out here? You know, the first rule of adventure games, take anything that ain't nailed down. As I like to say, because, yeah, um, because adventure games aren't all that big anymore. In fact, this game introduces talking to people. Pardon, excuse me, sister. Good evening, sister. Good evening, I'm Mother Elizabeth. What brings you here, Mr. Devitt? I'm a former student at this boarding school. As you see, as you see, Nissa Devitt, this has stopped being an academic institution a long time ago and is now exclusively dedicated to prayer and the well-being of the patients under our care. I see. Even so, I'm pl may I please speak to Nissa Devitt? I'm afraid we are too busy to start wasting time talking about past issues. In addition, there is little to say. We sisters arrived after the boarding school had closed down Everybody but Monsig, uh, of course. Monsignor? Exactly. But you didn't answer my question. Why have you come to this place, Mr. Devitt? Um, this place will help me remember my past. If you have memory problems, I recommend you visit an, a doctor immediately and don't waste your time here. I prefer not to talk, uh, to be honest, I prefer not to talk about it. I couldn't tell you why this place is so important to me, but it is. A lot. But I appreciate your honesty, Mr. Devitt. I'll allow you to stay around here. I hope I won't regret my decision. Don't worry, Mother. Thank you. And off come to hang coat. So, where should I explore first? I'd say this room. For oh. Hmm. Amongst the baggage, I see a packet of letters bound by twine. I see. So what's their story? Doctor. I'm sorry, I'm not a doctor. Pray him no mind. He is. He is. Sorry, he has been delirious for some days. I'm Miss Mary Vidge, and this is my brother, Matthew. Juliet, 
Why have you left me? Why don't you answer my goals? <laughs> my letters. You see, this poor man is still obsessed with his wife. He won't accept that he le she left him months ago. My poor Matthew. I'm very sorry, Miss Finch. I hope he recovers. Thank you. His wife has not left him. I have proof. Mr. Finch, this letter is addressed to you. Oh, thank you. Leave it to me, and if you'd be so kind, as you can see my brother is too weak to read it. Well, Matthew, let's see what who has written to you. Oh, it's from your our mother. Dear Matthew, I hope you're recovering. I wish that your beloved sister and you have come home soon. Oh, she's just lying through her teeth. This Finch is making up the letter's contents. Plan to expose this scoundrel. My letters! All the letters I wrote to dear Juliet! You never posted them! But why, Mary? Why would you be do, do such a cruel thing? <laughs> How could you be so cruel? I had to do it, Matthew. You refuse to see how inappropriate a match she is for you. Her only interest is in marrying someone of your status, our family status. It is for your, your sake that I did this. I did this to protect you from that woman's treachery. No, you only thought for yourself, of your vanity. I cannot bear to look upon you anymore, Mary. Leave me be, for this day forth, you are no sister of mine. You dare banish me, I who stayed by your side all through your illness. Very well, Matthew, you have weighed your way. I will leave you, and then you will see how very alone you are. Farewell, brother. Thanks be the Lord that you have come to reveal my sister's cruelty, sir. Please take this coin as a token of my appreciation. It is my lucky coin, though I hope it serves you better than it has myself. Yeah. So, title, magazine titled Weird Tales. So, uh, yeah, don't, don't worry, that coin will have a use eventually, and I will show you then. Now then, time to go continue my walk down Mary, memory lane. Into this room. I remember that we used to keep some textbooks here. Now there's a music box. Well, it's my music box now. Okay. Dear brother, I have received your letter and I'll try to write you. I'll try to write you more frequently. I hope you're studying a lot and feel comfortable there. We miss you a lot. When you'll be coming back, Father is, is in bed with fever, and I do not feel very well, I'm, but I'm on medication. Today is my birthday, and I'm feeling blue. It's quiet and boring Sunday at the village. Mum is going to cook a lemon cake, as those, as those in Grandma used to make. I wish we could eat it together. Right back soon. I'm hoping. I'm looking forward to knowing what you're doing, what you're learning. How is Scotland, and so on? A big hug. I think about you a lot, your dear sister. Oh, I hope that letter reached them. January fifteenth, eighteen seventy-six. Father Ernest seemed unusually troubled today. Several times he paused abruptly in the middle of a lecture for no reason, even during our favourite class, Theology. Yeah, today Father Ernest was very irritable. Collins made a comment and was expelled from class for it, and even Devitt was ad admonished just for reading a philosophy book. I hope Father Ernest hasn't turned his eye. Er, 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 towards me. My father will be disappointed if I fail to get good marks. I was very dis. Sorry, January twenty first, eighteen seventy six. I was very dis. Discur discern discern discerning to see Father Ernest during entering class so pale and sweaty. 
In the middle of his lecture, he stumbled, dazed, and had to sit. January 22nd, 1876. Father Ernest taught our theology of the class today, even though he doesn't know the subject matter as well as Father Ernest. Yeah, Father Eugene, sorry. Doesn't taught us. Yeah. When we asked him what happened to Father Ernest, Father Eugene told us he had taken ill. What worries me now is Father Eugene is also starting to look unwell. February 20th, 1876. It's been a month since we last saw Father Ernest. We've all told he's still sick, but so, but he's, if he's so ill, then why hasn't a physician come to treat him? My studies are flagging, but I have taken it upon myself to read on my own. I hope this helps, as I must succeed in spite of the problems happening around us. Well, that's determination. February 23rd, 1876. I was announced, it was announced this morning that school is to close. None of us know why, and we can't get a straight answer from the faculty. They each dodged the question, and I'm starting to think they may not know the answer themselves. Their anxiety is par palpable, and though I, they try to hide it behind a calm face. But what about Father Ernest? I hear he's alone to remain after we vacate the premises. There is a picture in the diary. This photograph of my graduating class. I see myself, Father Ernest, and Anthony. I don't remember the names of the others. One face is completely scratched out. So, Father Ernest is to remain here and there's a guy we can't see. Connection? Well, we'll have to find out. I unlocked the door. You, sir. Good evening. I hope you're right and this indeed would be a good evening. My, f my name is Devitt. I don't... I didn't know there was a cemetery here. My pleasure, Mr. David. I'm Frank Baldwin. Please don't ask me why. Mr. But Monsignor... Monsignor... Specifically ordered me to bury the corpses here. Yeah, I'm sorry about the accent, but I'm not entirely sure which accent we give him. Scottish? Irish? Ah, oh, whatever. Why? I don't understand. Um, yeah, well, did he order to bury corpses here? Why? I don't understand. What is there to understand, Mr. Devitt? God has forsaken this place. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Baldwin. I'll leave you with your work. Have a nice evening. Okay. Hmm. An old piece of fish. Old piece of fishing net. That. Many years adrift, uh, perfectly smoothed this flotsam of a small log. That's mine now. The uh, Lost Pilgrim, a sea stack older than the students at the school used to. Sorry, a sea stack older students at the school used to climb somewhere up there on my initials. Ah, I used to be a rebel back in the day, though. Ah, you've all been there. Seen a thing of a jig you wanted to climb, climb it, dig something into the wall if you had something on hand. Wait, hang on, I haven't done that. What the hell am I on about? Oh, okay. What do you want? Please, summon pity. I am sorry, you cannot be here. Is there any way I can help? Don't worry about it, sir. The Lord looks after each and every one of our patients. He will provide for you with all the help you need. If you wish, you can pray here next to the statue of Our Lady. Don't you think she is beautiful? The Virgin listens to those in need. Uh -huh. There are several crucifix altogether at the headboard of this bed. Why? That is indeed a good question. Yeah, so, um, that statue will be important later. 
more important now if you're particularly religious and care about the Virgin Mary, I guess. Oh, hello, miss. Good evening, sister. Sister? All this suffering, all the tears, all our prayers are answered. What do you mean, sister? All those years, in trust to the Lord, praying, looking for a sign. For something that can give me strength. Every day I hear them cry, pray, scream and die. And what for? Where are you, Lord? Why don't you answer me? Maybe there is no Lord, sister. What should we do then? What is our living purpose? I can't go on. Not like this. Excuse me, sir. Alright. Get some lovely music. Oh, what a beautiful mel melody. It reminds me of my youth when I was vibrant and full of purpose. I knew my path then. Oh, may God bless you. For you have given me the sign I was looking for. I wonder she's off to. Right, so I won't be looking in there. Hmm. A lot of dirty leaves have accumulated in this old rusty pipe. They are blocking the water system. Well, this will be needed for a puzzle. I think that would be useless. Oh, okay, take out the leaves first. Then stone. Yeah, they get rid of the jaggedy edges. I blunted the sharp edge of the pipe. Now I need not fear being cut. Stick a net in there. The net should catch anything coming down the pipe. Now I think you can see what's, where this is going. Right. I mean, may notice something a bit off here. Another tapestry. Though I remember it from my school days. The student dormitory was here. Shiny object. There's a purple puddle in there's, there's a puddle in don't I say purple? There's a puddle in the shower hole with something shining in, under the grating. Can't reach it properly. Well there's only one way to get that then. I already opened a tap. I can open a rat tap with well with no risk of losing a shiny object. Good observation. And of course I've got a broken mirror. That's bad luck. It's that broken mirror. There is protruding peace. It's yours now. Well, like I said, take everything that ain't nailed down. Um, right. We're done there. Okay, so now with the, the nun up, the sister of the way. What do we do now? Hmm. Oh yeah, now I remember. How can I forget this? I'm mean, gonna set it up so I can take the thing. And then it's called a shiny object. Now it's my shiny object. And let's look at it. It's a glass here, probably belonging to a piece of jewelry. I just had this, the idea what we could do with this. Remember that mournful statue of the Virgin Mary? And how the Virgin Mary, the Virgin will listen to all those in need? Well, it's about time to turn the tables. I have placed a glass in the hollow of the Virgin Mary's cheek. It seems it fits perfectly. So yes, now it's the Virgin Mary who's in need. Oh yes, we are faking a sign from the Lord. 
Oh, a mother is crying? Oh my lord, what does it mean? What have I done? What have we done? Um, I feel I may have shattered her entire everything. So you must help me. <laughs> what can I do? What's wrong with you? There is little time. I can t I tell about my pain. I describe the unbearable, the endless pain. And yet they do not listen. They pass me by without even looking at me. They say that they are praying for me, but it does not cure my ailment. But sir, I... I know, I beseech you, you will be saving me from horrible torture. I will be eternally, eternally indebted to you. I guess I, I understand. Your request is terribly hard for me. I guess I could find the courage to help you. I understand the magnitude of what I'm asking. God bless you, sir. I don't know how I can show my gratitude. What I need you to do is, without the nuns noticing, try to take an amount of morphine enough so, so I can be embraced in the deepest dreams and the, that way stop the rhythm of my heart. Because you gotta listen to the heart, listen to the beat. No, no, no. This is not the time for that. Yes. Well, I was getting a bit too grim. A syringe next to a flask with the label says morphine. Well, this is a hospital. What do you expect? Right. Morphine delivery. Um, nothing wrong here. Hang on a moment. There is a note in the bed. Baldwin lies, Baldwin lies, Baldwin. Oh, minute. I knew something was up with that groundskeeper. Noises are coming from within the inside the coffin. A locked, badly fastened wooden coffin. It seems whoever made it was rushed to finish it. I think I should also go down here. Yeah, I think I can guess where the nun went. A nun's habit and walking stick. These no doubt belong to the nun I spoke to by the window. But where did she go? I think that question is... I think that answer is pretty obvious. A grave recently dug. Right, don't worry. I can get him out that cave coffin. You. Tell me about Monsoon. I can't rightly say. After all these years, I've never seen the man. Who knows? Maybe he doesn't exist? I'll let you get back to work. Have a nice evening. It looks like his toolbox. I wonder if there's something useful in it. I might be able to take a look if, if I keep him distracted. Alright, then tell me about this place. Well, the construction of this building was ordered by a special bishop of Absidine in 1805. Tell me about Absidine. It was this place where I was born and raised in one of the biggest cities in Scotland. If you look towards the northeast, you'll see the Cathedral. No, the King's Chapel is the highest place in the city. Oh, you seem a bit distracted, Mr. Tivitt. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll leave you with your work, Mr. Baldwin. Yep, that was pretty easy. 
Yeah, once you get them talking, them groundskeepers. That's not good. The darkness in his eye. The body is petrified. He has a look of sheer terror in his eyes. Oh my god. What has happened? Talk. Talk to me. I best leave the nun to this. Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds like a good idea. Right. So, if that's... If my guess is correct, that should mean all the nuns are now occupied. Meaning it is time to enter that room. Which I shall save for next time. Till then, goodbye.